Hello my friends. In today's session we will discuss about one of the most biggest natural calamity which occurs on earth and that is avalanche. My dear friends, avalanches can happen wherever there is snow lying on the ground of sufficient angle. Accidents in recent years in most mountain areas demonstrate the truth of this statement. The vastly increased popularity of winter climbing and hill walking along with the growth of interest in sky touring means that greater numbers are at hazard. So sadly, each year adds to the list of injuries or fatalities. And many of these accidents would have been avoidable given greater care or knowledge or if the victims have even paused to consider that avalanche hazard might be present. So in making practical assessments of avalanche hazard, there is no substitute for the instinctive feeling for snow conditions which can be gained only by years of experience. However, no one is born with such experience and the novice or the low or the less frequent winter mountain user may still enjoy a safe day out if some basic principles are learned and acted upon. So, this is one such important topic to be discussed among us. So, let us start with this interesting session of avalanche. Yes, my dear friends, what is an avalanche? My friends, snow is deposited in successive layers as the winter progresses. And these layers may have dissimilar physical properties physical properties and an avalanche occurs when one layer slides on another which is also called as surface avalanche or the whole snow cover slides on the ground which is termed as the full depth. So these layers have some dissimilar physical properties and it occurs on the surface avalanche also and the full depth avalanche also. Now my friends, an avalanche may be dry or wet according to the weather which is free of snow or whether the water is present in the snow or not. Now it may be of loose snow also when the avalanche starts at a single point or a slab avalanche which occurs when an area of more cohesive snow separates from the surrounding snow and slides out. So in practice, any snow slide big enough to carry it is big enough to carry a person down, right? So this is hazardous, right? Now here you can see a beautiful picture of the avalanche. Now the most important factor here is in determining whether avalanches are likely and the evolution of the snowpack is entirely dependent on this. Now, however, as the mountaineer can study both of these cases, it is useful to do so. Many weather variables affect avalanche release and information can often be gained before setting, uh, setting it out. So, readouts from the summit weather stations can be beneficial. Now, the information provided on temperature, wind speed and direction often enables useful predictions to be made before stepping out on the snow or for sky touring or for anything right so we should keep in mind that whether the conditions are favorable enough for such sky touring or anything else right so basically i would like to say that an avalanche is any amount of snow which is sliding down a mountain side it can be compared to a landslide only with snow instead of earth or land Another common term for avalanche is also called as snow slide. Right? So, it is also called as snow slide. And as an avalanche becomes nearer to the bottom of the slope, it gains speed and power. And this can cause even the smallest of the snow slides to be a major disaster. So, now we need to know that how they occur. Yes, my friends, 
An avalanche can be composed of many different kinds of snow depending on the region, temperature and even the weather. It could be compiled of loosely packed light fluffy snow which can still be very dangerous even though it may not appear threatening and it could also consist of a thick slab which is an area of tightly packed together snow that separates itself from the surroundings. So basically how and why do avalanches happen? Now here the snow packed down on the surface cannot support itself with all the weight. Right? Here you can see a picture and you can clearly understand that it is the snow patched down on the surface which cannot support itself and that is why avalanches happen. Now there are major temperature changes, rapid wind speed and man-made influences which are the main causes of why avalanches occur. Now most avalanches begin within weak layers of snow. Here you can see some of the layers. Not the clear layers, but these are some of the layers where the avalanches occur. Now these begin within the weak layers of snow which evolve within the snow pack or they form on the top of the snow and they become buried. Now eventually these weak layers can no longer hold up the weight on the lower overlying snow and they give away causing the snow above them to break free and slide downhill. And this is what we call it as avalanche. So my friends, when the factors other than the temperature changes, rapid wind speed and man-made influences such as the person's step is introduced, when other another factor like uh, person's step is introduced and this helps to loosen the snow and an avalanche occurs. So there are man-made influences too which are the main causes of why avalanches occur. So here you can see one more picture of an avalanche. Now for this avalanche to be occurred which forms or which occurs or which happens or not there is a test called a snow pack test which is used for checking the recent avalanche activity and the fresh snow drifts and even the large snow masses. Now the depth of each footstep or the cornice build up and the wind patterns show that the snow is packed together or not. So if snow breaks up when we step on it, then we should avoid steep areas for an avalanche danger can be very high. And to do a snow pack test, it is very simple. We just have to cut out a square slab of snow and we have to check the pack on the layers using a shovel, fist or pick depending on the hardness we are dealing with. And by figuring it out, the pack of the snow can make silent avalanches become more exposed to our senses. So this is how we can take care from these hazardous calamity. Now let's see that where and when avalanches can happen. Now my friends avalanches happen on mountains with extreme amounts of slow fall and build up. So it can be basically slow snowfall and building up of the snow. Now wherever snow is lying on the ground on an extreme and sufficient angle, there is potential for a sleeping avalanche. The steadily increasing numbers in popularity of winter activities along with the growth of interest in skiing has resulted in a much greater hazard. So there are many such sites around the world that are potential or they have already experienced avalanches like Europe, France, Swiss mountains, Western Canada, Utah, Alaska, and Colorado are just a few places that have high probability of avalanches because all of these locations go through a thaw and freeze during the year at the basis of the of the mountains. So this is very stressful on the snow built up above and packs it tighter together. So these are some of the various factors which affect whether or not avalanches are probable to occur or not. So the factors are the weather, the snowpack and the terrain. The weather is the most important when deciding whether avalanches are likely to happen or not. So the height of the snowpack is dependent on the weather also. From the weather, the temperature, wind speed and direction are the factors to watch. And with a quick change in any of the weather factors, an avalanche could an avalanche is expected. For example, if the temperature 
where have to have a rapid increase then a wet slab avalanche is likely to occur so this is what we can predict that where and when avalanches can happen now my dear friends many avalanches that occur are cornice and there are other types too when they are triggered and these happen during snowstorms strong winds and usually they occur one to two days after or shortly after a quick thaw and temperature rise so finally the terrain factor of avalanches depends on the slope angle ground surface and slope profile and on the basis of these factors we can also see the kinds of avalanches so the kinds of avalanches are slab avalanches sloughs or loose snow avalanches and the wet avalanches now my dear friends talking about the kinds of avalanches the sloughs or loose snow avalanches are those which are cold sloughs are cold snow and they are powdery surface slides that typically are the least dangerous type of slide however sloughs can and they can often do injure skiers and pro borders sorry borders by pushing them over cliffs and rock bands and steep terrain so this is what we call it as the loose snow avalanches while the wet avalanches they are the ones which occur on the wet slides wet slides occur when warm temperatures melt the surface snow layers and they saturate them with water so the water weakens the bonds between layers and avalanches often occur so wet avalanches move more slowly than dry avalanches but they can still be very dangerous so if temperatures have been above freezing for extended periods then wet avalanches will most likely occur talking about the slab avalanches so here i have presented a diagram of a slab avalanche now here you can see this is the blue color this is indicated as the starting zone of the slab avalanche the second one the violet one is also called is it it is called as track and the red area is called as the deposition run out sorry deposition zone or it is also called as run out right so basically slab avalanches are those avalanches which most people in which most people die they die in slab avalanches slab avalanches occur when a more cohesive or harder layer of snow sets on the top of less cohesive or softer and weaker layer of snow so sometimes the weak layer it can barely support the layers above it and when additional weight like a skier or boulder is added to the upper layers like as i said before like a person step is introduced then what will happen the weak layer collapses and the snow pack fractures occur and the slab avalanche occurs so basically slab avalanches often involve large volumes of fast moving snow and victims lie like these skiers in the with the skiers they typically they can get affected by it right so these are some of the avalanches kinds of avalanches which come in many shapes and sizes and even small ones can also be dangerous so that was all about the avalanches i hope you enjoyed this session of understanding one more natural calamity and that is avalanche so we will meet in the next session with a new topic till then goodbye and have a nice time